But uh, today I wanted to go ahead and work on the front axle. So what we're going to do right now is the upper and lower ball joints, the hub assembly, and uh, while we're at it, we're going to swap out the brake rotor as well. So first things first, we've got to go ahead and get the tire off. All right, so here's the front end that we're going to be working on. So we're going to start by, uh, we got to get the brake rotor out of the way. And this is actually our hub assembly here behind it. Um, so to replace that, we're going to want to get the brake caliper off, the caliper mounting plate, the rotor, and then we can go ahead and get the three bolts on the back and, and get that sucker off. And then we've got, uh, well, before we can get that off, we got to take the axle nut out. And then uh, once all that's off, um, we can go ahead and break our ball joints loose press them out, and then go ahead and kind of move the knuckle out of the way, replace those, and then go ahead and, and put everything back together. Alright, so we got our brake caliper up out of the way. We're making sure we're not pinching our line. We can always move this if we need to. A lot of times, too, you can just set a stand underneath to set on. I'm actually using a bungee cord up on the coil spring here. Let's move these back. I'm going to try to take the bracket off and leave the actual pads in it. I don't get mixed up on which one's which, so. Okay. There's one. I have to move our ABS signal wire out of the way. Ah, I need an extension. Come up. The wheel turn just a little bit it can make it easier if you don't have a big big ratchet and you got to use a breaker bar sometimes the breaker bars especially if you're working on a car you can't get enough movement underneath the car so turn the wheel that way you can have the breaker bar coming out and then you can go ahead and do what you need to do okay there we go okay so we can take these off with the pads already in that way we can just set this aside we know which pad goes where, they're already in the sliders. We will grease the slider pins on those, so I will say that. So I'm going to turn this straight again. All right, so the next thing, on this particular one, I know um, we can get the, we should be able to get the axle nut off without using a breaker bar. We can just use the impact on it. So that's why I went ahead and took the brakes off. Um, if you had to use a breaker bar, you could have somebody put the brakes on and go ahead and get that nut loose first. If you're not too sure if your uh, impact can do it or you don't have an impact, that's one way to handle it. In this case, I'm pretty confident we'll be all right. And if not, then I'll look stupid and have to put it back on. So um, let's go ahead and get our rotor off. Let's try to get our rotor off. There we go. All right, our rotor is off. Sometimes it helps turn the wheels and get behind it. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and take our cotter pin off. And uh, I'm just gonna get a little PV blaster on it. Peel these legs up. A lot of people come in and they'll just cut them out, but sometimes they get a little rusted in, especially on these outside ones. Um, I've run this car with some steel wheels without center caps on it, so it does have a little bit of extra rust. Sometimes I like to use a punch and a hammer just to get a little, get, break some of that rust loose and hammer it out. All right, there we go. No worry if you break the cotter pin, you can just put a new one in. So. Here we go. All right, so we've got that out. Let's pop our cover off here. And we can go ahead and see our axle nut under there. And that to the side. All right, so there's our axle nut. Let's go ahead and get some PB on it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the impact gun. That's a 36 millimeter. So 
Okay, and there's our axle nut off. There's the washer behind it. Go ahead and just pop that out. All right, this will be a pain. <laughs> yeah, 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 it'll just pop right out, right? There's our washer. At this point, we're pretty much ready to take the hub off. So to do that, we're gonna put some PB blaster around it and then there's three bolts in the back. Alright, so I've moved the wheel again to get a little better view of our hub assembly that we're going to take off. And uh, over time, this thing has 165,000 miles on it. It's over 10 years old, and the hub assembly has never been off. So, these are going to be a fun one to get off. There's three bolts. They're 13, point, or 13 millimeter 12 point bolts. So, you're going to need, instead of a 6 point socket, a 12 point socket. Okay, and they are 13 millimeters. I've seen uh, one place I was doing a little research on was referencing that they're half inch and a half inch fits, that there's rust on them. Um, you know, I don't know for other Jeeps or for other years manufactured, but I can tell you on, on my particular one, um, these are metric threads and they are 13 millimeter 12 point metric head on the bolts. So let's go ahead and take those off. So we've got three of them. You want to make sure you work them on good. Make sure your ABS wire isn't in the way. Take it out of the bracket at least. And then later we'll, we'll go ahead and pop it off. But for now I'm fine. So get it on there nice and good. You don't want to round that 12 point head off the bolt. Alright, there we go. There's one, we'll get it started. Ah, jeez, I'm almost tight. All right, and there we go. There we go. Now these are going to be kind of tight to get off, especially because of the rust on the outside of the bolts, which we tried to wire brush off a bit, and we did have the PB blaster to help out. Okay, there's another one. All right. So now that those are all out, we have to actually get the, the uh, hub bearing assembly off of the knuckle. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, a lot of um, times you'll think, all right, I'll just put a puller and pull out here, when well, you can actually separate this piece of the bearing out of here. Um, some people will chisel along this side with a cold chisel and try to get it out a little bit at a time, try to get it even. But I found one of the best methods is uh, what they refer to as a sacrificial bolt method. And you basically get a bolt of the same threads, long enough to stick out. You kind of thread it here. I like to use this one because I can get a good swing at it. And then just hammer that um, bolt until this pushes out. And then sometimes I'll use a chisel just to help it along, make sure it comes out straight. Um, because the Grand Cherokee has the kind of CV axle, you got to be careful that you don't puncture the boot when you're hitting it. So you want to kind of take some care as you're doing that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and use that method to get this out. Um, hopefully we'll be able to at least break it loose a little bit and then kind of chisel around um, with the cold chisel. Just act as a wedge. We're not actually chiseling away anything and uh, except rust. But uh, once we do that, we can make sure it comes out evenly. There's actually a lip that it goes in, that it has, that it goes into the, the knuckle. So if it tries to come out crooked, it'll jam up. So you want to kind of get a little bit either way. And I'm not really comfortable trying to hit around here where we've got our, our tie rods and stuff. So we're just going to go ahead and do our sacrificial bolt technique. Just lightly get this started. I'm not too worried about the threads. The actual knuckle isn't threaded. 
uh, only the threads on the uh, bearing assembly and we're replacing that so not too worried about those. I don't do this with the bolts because that come out of it I don't want to replace them. So I'm actually using, to be honest with you, a grade 8 bolt but it's non-metric and that's how I know that the threads here are metric. Um, I can fit a metric bolt that I have in it but it basically just barely catches so I can't use it to hammer. So. All right, and if you can see down here, we're actually starting to have our flange separate a bit. All right, so our sacrificial bolt method has gotten us started. But again, I don't want to keep hammering on that side and jam it up in the, in the lip on the uh, knuckle. So I'm going to go ahead and use our chisel. And just go the rest of the way around. And there we go. And there we go, there's our bearing assembly off. All right, we'll go ahead and pull out our axle. So then these Jeep axles on the Dana 30, our oil levels below the actual axle point. So we can pull these out without any problem. Set that aside. We'll go ahead and inspect the boot on the CV joint. But everything so far is looking pretty good. All right, now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and take off our ABS sensor here. And that's an eight millimeter bolt. Get this out of the way so that we don't damage it. All right, there's our ABS sensor. Move that out of the way over with the caliper so we don't damage it. All right, next we're gonna take our cotter pins out of both ball joints. And the way we're gonna do the ball joints, all right, so we got the one up here, the nuts right under here, and it does have this bracket for the ABS sensor. The one on the bottom, they're both pointing down. Both the, stud, the ball joint studs are, are pointing down. So if we were to take all of the nuts off and then break the taper on, on one of them, it'll actually break the taper on both. You'll drop the knuckle down. I'm actually not gonna remove the, uh, the tie rods here. What I plan to do is go ahead and pop this off, move it over, off to the side, and I'm gonna use a bungee just to hold it up on the sway bar. And then we can come in here, we'll pop these ball joints out with the press, put the new ones in, and then put these back on. So the key is I don't want this knuckle to fall because I'm gonna leave it connected. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is after I take the cotter pins out, we'll loosen the castle nuts, but we'll leave them on the threads. That way we can break the taper, but have the control of knowing they're gonna stop when they hit those nuts. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting those cotter pins off. They're nice and rusty, I might just cut them out. Once we're at that point, we'll break the uh, nuts loose, break the tapers, and then we'll get everything squared away. All right, so we got our cotter pins out, so we're just gonna loosen up our ball joints. We got the bottom one loose, just enough to break the taper, and then we're gonna go ahead and loosen the top one. There we go. All right, so again, enough to go ahead and break our taper. All right, so we're gonna use uh, a pickle fork to go ahead and break the taper on our ball joints. We're just gonna put this tool right in here. And then that's gonna go ahead and kind of wedge in and separate the knuckle from the uh, axle piece here, thus kind of um, separating the taper on the ball joint. And uh, this whole thing will drop down. It'll catch on the nut that we left down here. Now, if you're planning to reuse ball joints or if you're doing something like tie rods, this really isn't the best tool to use because you will tear the boot up uh, using this tool, but we are replacing them. This is the easiest way to go ahead and whack these loops. So we're going to go ahead and get it started. All right, there we go. Right, we're just gonna go ahead and pull our nuts off the ball joints the rest of the way. And start with the top one. Um, the uh, ball joint stud was actually spinning in the ball joint, so I've got these pliers, adjustable pliers holding it. All 
All right, and as you can see, I've got a pretty hefty ball, uh, pretty hefty bungee cord holding up our knuckle assembly. As I go ahead and take this off. Now we can drop this out of the way. Swivel this out of our way. And like that, we've got the bungee cord holding it up. We'll go ahead and just to make sure we're safe, go ahead and double up. There we go. And that'll hold that up out of the way. So here's our ball joints here. So this is what we're going to press out before we do much of anything. Put some extra PB blaster on them, let that soak in a bit. All right, so here's the one we're gonna use up top. I've got a grease fitting in there, so I wanna make sure I've got enough room to press it out without hitting that. And then we've got this one on the bottom. I'm gonna mount that up like this. We'll go ahead and spin this out. All right, so we got our tool in place. We have our cup down here to press up. We have our receiver cup. And we're just gonna go ahead and find the right socket to go on top. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and wrench this down. I okay. uh, went ahead and lowered the brake caliper out of the way and our ABS sensor out of the way because the way this is, it's gonna wanna turn on us. So I'm just gonna kind of butt it up against the axle piece here. I'll be able to put a lot of weight on it. All right, once we get it tight, we're gonna take our hammer. I'm gonna hit the uh, edge here. Should be able to go ahead and tighten it up more. And there we go. And it'll be a little tight, but go ahead and tighten it in. And it starts to loosen up as you press it out. Okay, and we must be hitting the top of our one cup, so we'll go ahead. off. Okay. And there's our ball joint. Nice pressed out. All right, we're just going to repeat the same for the bottom. All right, so our bottom one, I'm zoomed in a little closer. This one pushes down. This one presses out down. So that's the key thing to know there. So we're just going to use this piece here. And then we'll use this large cup on the bottom. Okay, so much the same, we're just gonna go ahead and use our ratchet. And we're gonna tighten this down. Now again, the uh, part we're tightening, we actually put through the upper part of the axle on this uh, particular car to make it fit, so. Okay. There we go. And we're actually already pressing it through even without having the hammer it, so. pretty much ready now to reinstall our ball joints and as they say it's pretty much the reverse way we took them out we're going to press them back in and uh, there's a couple tricks for doing that and on this particular vehicle um, there is a specific type of um, tool you're going to want to use to press it in the cups 
There's actually one cup, if you have an assortment of them, it's probably tough to see, but this has a bit of a, a, a taper, a bevel. It kind of goes like that, it's in an angle. So this angle piece is very important because the ball joint actually up here is in a slight bit of an angle. So it's very easy as you're pressing these back in because there's this little bit of an angle the way that this sits, you can press it in trying to go straight up and down but since this piece is actually angled up a little bit, you're gonna put the ball joint in at an angle and it's gonna hang up. Just like when we were taking that hub assembly off, we wanted it even to come straight out so it doesn't jam up uh, in the lip. Same thing in the race here as we're pressing in. We don't want the ball joint going in crooked, jamming up and damaging either the ball joint or the race itself, and then not seating properly, being loose, being unsafe, etc. So you gotta make sure you have the right one. Some people. All right, so we're ready to press in our ball joints. And just a tip, you're gonna to wanna to start with the bottom, because that way you're able to position the tool, the press tool, up through the top here, because you're gonna to wanna to press you know, up from the bottom. If you do it the other way around, that ball joint's gonna be in the way, you're gonna to have to kinda of do this off center. And it's probably possible, but it's really not the way you wanna do it. You really wanna press these in nice and square and straight. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do as our new lower ball joint using this. So basically to put it back in, we're going to want to press it up. I've taken the boot off and we're going to use this piece, which will sit whoops, like this nicely on that lip without damaging the internals. And then it'll sit in the receiver of our uh, press tool. Okay. So we've got that set in place. We'll go ahead and just tighten it up. I need to just make sure everything is nice and square. And then we can go ahead and press our ball joint in. Okay, and then until it's nice and snug and levels out. All right, and keep turning it until it's nice and snug and seated properly. And then you can go ahead and release the tension. Okay. And there's our bottom ball joint pressed in. Make sure that it is seated correctly. We're gonna to wanna to remember to put our boot on before we go too much further. But we're gonna first do the top one. Okay, so Again, same deal on the top. A little bit of grease inside of our race. And we'll go ahead and drop the ball joint in. All right, so on this one, we're gonna utilize this cup on top. And then on the bottom, mentioned earlier, we're going to use the beveled receiver. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take our tool. Slide this on, this piece. Make sure we put our angle in the right spot. And then we're gonna go ahead and start cranking this down and pressing that ball joint. All right, and there we go. Our upper ball joint is installed and our lower ball joint is installed. Now the next thing we're gonna to need to do is go ahead and put the grease fittings on. An important thing to note for the bottom one here, we're gonna go ahead and, well, first, we'll have to reinstall the boot. All right, so on our bottom one, once we get our knuckle back on, we are gonna go ahead and put a grease fitting in, grease it up, but then we're gonna remove the grease fitting and put a grease cap on. Now the reason we're gonna do that, the height of the grease fitting will actually interfere with the axle on the Grand Cherokee, because it has a thicker piece here because it has the CV axle and the ABS ring on it. So on that particular one, we're gonna to have to do that. 
on the top one, we can go ahead and install a grease fitting and leave it there and this will be a nice easily serviced, easily serviced ball joint. Alright, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and install our grease nipples, or grease fittings, whichever you want to call them. At this point, we can go ahead and get ready to reinstall the knuckle. Alright, so we've got our two castle nuts. Put the top one there for now. We'll go ahead and just cinch on the bottom one. So we're going to take our knuckle, go ahead and get it in place. Okay, we've made sure that our boot is fully pressed on. And we can go ahead and position our knuckle one up over the top. Go ahead and press it up like that. Go ahead and get this started. Okay, and then once we've got enough thread here, we can get this one started. And once our knuckle's on, we're going to go ahead and torque them down. Okay, that one's done. And then we'll move on to the top one. Okay, and then all you got to do is uh, turn your castle nuts just a little bit further, just enough so you can fit your cotter pins through. And then once you've done that, you're all set. And you can put your cotter pins in. So All right, now that we've greased the, the uh, lower ball joint, we are going to have to remove this grease fitting as we mentioned earlier, otherwise it'll interfere with the axle, so we'll replace that with a grease cap. Now we can reinstall our axle. Okay, and we're ready to install our new bearing. Get our new bearing installed. We'll slide in the bolts, get those started. All right, then we'll reinstall our ABS sensor, which of course we make sure you have your bracket reinstalled. That looks good.
much better shape. Good. Keep down. All right. I think we're all done.